Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Marie and in this space I appreciate beautiful things. I also talk about deliberate and mindful luxury spending and the healthy financial habits that go along with it. If you're interested in those kinds of videos and would like to keep updated on new content, please do hit that subscribe button down below. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Marie Under the Sun for more everyday casual content. This video is going to be all about my Hermes journey, essentially talking about how I got to this point of being offered this beautiful Birkin 30 right here beside me. I've got everything all laid out on my phone, so I'll have my cheat sheet here and this entire video is going to be structured. So hopefully my notes will keep me from digressing way too much and actually talking about the kinds of things you guys wanna know about how to get to a point where you get offered your own quota bag as well. If you're also on your own journeys or thinking about starting to become a client at Hermes to be able to get one of their coveted quota bags. Hi everyone, this is Marie from the editing room. While I was going through the entire footage that I had filmed for this video, I realized I forgot to mention something incredibly important, and that is to not take this entire video as gospel for what you should do for your own quote unquote Hermes journey. My experience is very specific to my boutique, the circumstances, the clientele, the sales targets, and all of that sort of minutiae of what it means to be a client of Hermes. So while I am very happy to share this experience with all of you, to share my experience of being an Hermes client with all of you, you shouldn't be comparing your own experience with me because we don't have the same circumstances. We probably are not shopping in the same boutique. We probably don't have the same essay. We don't like the same things. And our boutiques probably have different sales targets, have different categories that they're prioritizing, definitely have a different group of high spenders, VVIPs, VIPs, and all that stuff. So there's so much subjectivity with the quote unquote Hermes journey. But I am sharing this with all of you just because I know that it feels like shopping luxury, especially Hermes, has become so gatekept. And I just wanted to share my experience with you all and maybe hopefully that you learn a few things to incorporate into your own buying, shopping approach at Hermes. So please, please, please don't compare yourself with me. Don't compare your own quote unquote Hermes journey with me. And most especially, don't think that by copying exactly what I did that you will also get to this point of getting a quota bag because I can probably guarantee you that it's all incredibly dependent on the circumstances of your own journey, your boutique, your essay, the sales manager at your boutique and all of that. So I hope you do guys enjoy this video, but also just take it as entertainment. Don't take this as the only way that you can get a quota bag. So here's the rest of the video. So this video is going to have four parts and I'm going to be putting timestamps all at the bottom just so you guys can go to the sections that most interest to you or would you, you would want to know more about. So first we're gonna start with my timeline and sort of a review of the wish list that I had given my essay. And then we're gonna be talking about my purchase history. I'm going to be 100% transparent about my purchase history even if I'm not going to go through every single item that I bought. But of course I'm gonna talk about categories, ratios, pre-spend and all that stuff. And then I'm going to talk about generally my relationship with my essay and some tips and tricks and how you can improve your relationship with your essay or even start a relationship with your own essay at your own local boutique. And then I'm just going to talk at the end a little bit about personal finances. I do mention this in a few of my videos about waiting until I'm financially ready. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, how I got to that point or what privileges or help I had in order to be able to get this when it was offered to me. Okay, so now let's start and let's start with my timeline. So November 22 was when I first visited the boutique and I visited the boutique with my husband. I do have a video talking about this a little bit from, I don't know, a year or so ago. And I'm just gonna link that above just in case you guys are interested in watching. That was also the time that we met our current essay and we actually had a really good time with her. We thought that she was incredibly professional. So when I decided to become 
a full-fledged client of Hermes, I decided to stay on with her. February 2023 is when I put the mini Evelyn on my wish list. Um, and this was because I had been going to the boutique once a month at that point. So by the time February rolled around, that was, I think I would say, my fourth time visiting the boutique in a span of four months. A month later in March 2023, when I visited again, I received my Evelyn. So there was really not a lot of wait time for that bag, which I'm grateful for because I have really, really enjoyed my Evelyn since getting it in March. So it's been almost a year since I've had my Evelyn and I do really enjoy that bag very, very much. Summer of 2023, I had no boutique visits. I was very busy. I was traveling a lot. So I had an involuntary no buy season, no luxury season, but all is well and good because September, 2023, I return to the boutique and that's when I actually bought my first ever Hermes ready to wear piece. And I'm going to link that video up above so you guys can take a look if you haven't yet. And that was when my essay brought up my wish list for a quota bag specifically. So ask if I wanted to put a Birkin or a Kelly on my wish list. So after that conversation of September 2023, I went to the boutique once a month again. So October and November, I went to the boutique. And then December 2023, at the end of the year is when my quota bag was officially offered to me. Now, just as a recap, the wish list combo that I discussed with my essay was very, very straightforward. I had no hardware preference. That's something I really did not care for. I preferred to have Togo leather because of how hardy it is. And then for the color, I said neutrals and no uber bright colors just because of how I want to use the bag. So any bright colors just wouldn't fit in my wardrobe and would be very, very hard for me to style just based on the clothes that I have. And for the size, because I really wanted a work and travel bag, I said either a Birkin 35 or a Kelly 32 with a preference for the Birkin 35. And that's when my essay also mentioned that they see a lot more Birkin 35s coming into the boutique. So that was the more likely offer that I was going to get. So overall, that is the timeline for my quota bag offer. I was a client for about a year, but did not request for a quota bag or put a quota bag in my wish list until I was, I don't know what it was, what, eight, nine? 10 months of being a client. And then I received my quota bag three months after I had requested or put my preferences on my wish list. So now let's go into my purchase history, which is sort of the juicy part of this, the meaty part of this video, right? So when we're talking about like starting my journey, I wasn't really thinking about being an Hermes client when we had that first experience. In that video that I had linked earlier, I mentioned that what we really wanted was to purchase uh, Christmas gifts for our parents. And because of the lovely experience and because, you know, that was probably my first time going into the store and just seeing how I really, really like their things from their silks to their homewares, their shoes, and some of the ready to wear, I really was impressed, not just by the service, but by the offerings of, you know, the items that they had. So I really did not think about their bags at all. It was only when I went back home and sort of reflect on that experience when I started researching about the brand, researching about the company, and then finding out about Birkins and Kelly's and all of that stuff. So, so when I started purchasing from Hermes, I had no wish list for a quota bag. It was really my essay who brought up the idea of putting either Birkin or a Kelly on my wish list. So during my journey, what I really did was I really got to know Hermes's offerings through research, looking at the website, and also reading a lot about their supply chains, their materials, their suppliers, and all of that stuff. So those are the kinds of things that interest me about a company. So I started really, really slow. And if you guys look at my previous videos, I started really with smaller items because I really wanted to get a feel for my essay's approach to her, her job, to her clients, and sort of get to know the culture of the boutique as well. So during that time, I did a lot of like reflecting on, you know, the items, the items that I enjoyed, and what items if there and if there were any items that I would want to have as just collections, rather than 
you know, buying them for their utility or their function. So I did a lot of that actually and really scoured the website a lot. And again, learning more about the company and their business practices, their supply chains and all of that stuff. That actually, that entire process made me a lot more interested in Hermes, a lot more interested in their products and just made me a full-fledged client actually. I want to make it clear as well that my journey was made possible and a lot easier because I have a lot of privilege. I am privileged enough to have a very, very supportive partner who understands why I like the things that I like and supports that. I'm also privileged to have very, very supportive parents who are very similar as well. They understand why I like the things that I like, respect that I like the things that I like, and help me sort of achieve my goals even if they're very super official in a way right like this is very consumeristic but i am very very privileged that they had made this sort of process a lot easier and a lot faster i would say because of some instances where they were shopping with me paying for my things and all of that stuff so let's talk about spend ratio when my essay brought up putting a quota bag on my wish list my essay against the birkin 35 was at 1.1 is to 1. Between putting my wish down and the actual offer, my spend ratio was 0 0.6 to 1. And the total, my total ratio at offer from beginning when I started shopping at Hermes is 1.8 to 1. And I'm just gonna put the categories that I spent in at the side. And these are ranked according to the highest spend category so you can see that the number one is women's ready to wear even if i only bought two items those were two pretty pricey items so that was at the top of my list followed by shoes i have a good amount of hermes shoes now i have one hermes watch that's number three and then i do have accessories like hats gloves and shawls i have a number of belts I bought some fashion jewelry for uh gifts and then i have one myself as well I have a lot of silks. I love their twillies a lot. As you can see, I already replaced my twillies <laughs> here with twillies that I already own because I just wanted more color for the occasion that I'm going to be bringing this bag next. A lot of cosmetics, lots of lipsticks, their eyeshadow, so I tried a lot of their new cosmetics. Small leather goods, and then last is men's silks for ties and all that stuff. And just as a note about these categories, all of this is organic spend. These are all things that I really liked from the brand. A lot of these things that I bought, especially things that I wear, like the ready to wear or the shoes, are things on my closet audit wish list, my capsule wardrobe wish list. There is a specific use for the items that I've bought. My Hermes items are used often. I use my belts every day. Um, I have two pairs, so I have I use them every day. I wear my Hermes Volver boots a lot now that it's winter. My puffer jacket is worn every day. It's probably one of my best Hermes buys, my best outerwear investments in general as well. So now let's talk about approaching your business relationship with your essay. And let's start with talking about how to choose an essay, right? I mentioned this earlier, but we stayed with our first essay when we first met her at our first ever visit to the boutique because we really liked her. She was very patient with us. We had a lot of questions. She was very helpful and we felt that she was very, very professional. No pressure at all to buy anything. And like I said, answered all of our questions. My husband can be very, very specific with his questions. So I was very, very grateful at how patient she was with my husband. So that first time we met our essay, we really, really liked her vibe. Speaking of approaches, let's talk about my approach to building and maintaining my professional business relationship with my essay. So that's the key word, professional. I am strictly professional with my essay. When I text her, it's really only about appointment requests and I'm very clear about the specific items that I am looking for. So if they don't have that, she can just say, we don't have it, but would you like to look at something else, etc. So I don't want to waste people's time. So that's why I'm very clear when I text her. When I request appointments, I try to do it 
as much in advance, like a week, a week and a half in advance, just to give her time to figure out her schedule. I probably have only texted her twice in the last year, more than a year that I've been working with her to get like a same day or next day appointment. So that's really not happened a lot. One other thing that I do communication wise is I try to text my appointment requests first thing in the morning when the boutique opens because that is when they are actually least busy. So I want to give her the opportunity to be able to look at her schedule early without like all of the other distractions and sort of the busyness of the boutique and so she is a lot more relaxed and that's actually worked very well for me. She's always been able to respond within a few hours, if not within 24 hours. I also don't really chat with my essay via text. Like I said, any text that I send her is really for appointment requests. So it's just to respect her time. And I know that there are so many clients that she has to deal with on a daily basis, both in person and via text. So I do all of my chatting with her at the boutique and not really via text. I just keep that professional at the minimum just to you know respect her time and respect the work that she's doing at the boutique. So I'm gonna round off this section with some tips that may be helpful to those of you who are thinking about starting to become a client at Hermes or thinking about starting your own process of getting a quota bag, your own profiles at Hermes, this might be helpful to you. For those who are actually thinking of now going into the boutique and finding your own essay, one of my tips is if you get there and are assigned to an essay that you don't like the vibe of, I would suggest not to go all in on your purchasing for that day and take one or two more visits to meet other essays and see how they are. They might be better or more suited to your disposition and your approach to buying luxury and buying luxury goods, right? Next is very, very important, I think, is always be straight to the point and don't waste the essay's time. If you have a question, ask it. Don't go talking around in circles and expecting your essay to understand what you're trying to say. So be straight to the point, be clear, be straightforward, ask the questions you need to ask, don't waste your essay's time. Another is very hard, but maybe this is also just my personality, but don't take unresponsiveness personally. I never panic when my essay doesn't respond to me. Like I said, I really only text her when it's about requesting appointments. So if she doesn't respond and there's like three or two days left before my requested time, I just text her again and say, hey, I still want to come in at this date and this time. Is this still good for you? Or do you have any preferred times and days within the next few days, right? It is a business relationship. Don't think of it as a slight on your character that sh that your essay doesn't respond to you. So like people don't respond to emails, you know, just email them back and say, hey, putting this as a topic for your inbox, etc., etc. So don't take unresponsiveness personally. This might not be possible for everyone, but just as a note and as a gesture of goodwill and your quote unquote loyalty to the brand or your seriousness to getting to the point where you get offered a quota bag. Always come out with something after every appointment, even if it's very small, like a Twilly or cosmetics or perfume or any of that stuff. It's just to make sure that your essay's time is not wasted. We are still here in this process to get a quota bag and there are still things that are important to Hermes to be able to get you the point of getting a quota bag, right? So bulking up your profile is important. So if you go into that store that day and just did not find anything that you wanted from your list, clothes, shoes, or whatever, buy something small and make sure that you already know the things that you can buy in lieu of other things that you wanted but were not available at the store. It takes a little bit of research, but if you're really serious about getting to the point of being offered a quota bag, this is, I think, very important to maintaining your profile at the boutique. The next one, I think it's a little bit controversial. Some people might agree with me, some might not, but I am, like I said, I'm very straight to the point. I'm very straightforward. So for me, it's always okay to remind my essay about all the items that I have wanted to purchase but are not available at the store yet or were not available at the time that I was there. So non-quota bag items, non-bag items, so like 
housewares, ready to wear, jewelry, all of that stuff. I actually, whenever I'm in the store, I do remind my essay, hey, where's the tea set? Or has the tea set arrived yet? Do you know when it's gonna arrive? Is there a shipment coming that you see? There might be some of the pieces from that tea set etc. Especially that tea set that I have wanted for a while now. So I have been reminding her every time I've gone into this into the boutique. But you know make sure you're not annoying about it. Now my essay knows that when I come into the boutique I will ask her about the status of these items that I've wanted to purchase and she now offers up that information freely. She'd go, sorry we don't have the tea set yet. I'm still waiting for the next shipment to see if we have it in that next shipment, etc. So it's supposed to be a two-way street. So if you're able to establish that rapport, your essay will also be able to sort of piggyback on your approach to these things, your disposition, your behavior. But make sure always be kind, be respectful, don't be super annoying because that's also something that I think essays in general just don't like is when you're an annoying customer who just bombards them with requests and texts and questions. And these last two, I just wanted to add this because while I was in this process of getting my quota bag, of course you kind of like consume a lot of the stuff that's being said online. For me, I just do it for entertainment purposes. I don't really take any of those to heart. I just follow to the beat of my own drum and not really anyone else's. But it's still very fun for me to read all of these, you know, stories and all of these advice and the internet about buying at Hermes. But this one tip is just to remind us that there are more important things than these bags and these luxury goods. Please don't forget to go out and touch grass. <laughs> there are more important things in life than this. Honestly, like I wasn't even thinking about this quota bag even after I added this on my wish list. I was like, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, whatever, right? It doesn't really change the trajectory of my life. So remember to go out and touch grass, all right? There are more important things in life. And lastly, if you are really, really serious about this, and this is really incredibly important to you, do increase your income. Find ways to increase your income because Hermes is very expensive. If I did not have my promotion and the number of bonuses I had in 2023, I don't think I would have gotten my quota bag in a year. I think it would have taken a lot more time because I would not have been able to spend as much as I had buy ready to wear as I did at the time that I did. So if this is really important to you, if Hermes is really important to you, do try as well to increase your income so you get the stuff that you want a lot faster. Now let's go to this penultimate section. I do have a surprise section at the end. Let's talk about my personal finances for a little bit because I do mention my finances a little bit in this channel and that is a part if you go to my introduction that is a part of what I do want this channel to be about and to talk about right. So I had started just saving generally for an Hermes quota bag back when I when I started thinking about it in Christmas of 2022 and this was when I had started to become a client a full-fledged client at Hermes. The reason for that was because I just wanted to start it didn't matter how much I was putting into that fund I just wanted to start just in case at some point I wanted to become very serious about it so I just started Christmas of 2022. In September of 2022, I actually had nearly a quarter of the cost of the Birkin 35 and that was because I did get a lot of bonuses and then I got a promotion towards the end of the summer. So I was able to put more money into this fund and also buy a lot more luxury goods. So I did pick up a significant chunk of luxury shopping if you just watch my videos throughout the year because of sort of that income increase in the last half of the year. And that was also when I had that conversation with my essay about putting a Birkin or a Kelly on my wish list. So after that conversation from October to December, this is when I actually started aggressively saving for a Birkin. So I had rerouted some of my allocations for other savings funds, travel, my personal emergency fund, my personal sinking fund, etc. to the Birkin 35 because one, I already had a significant amount of money in my other funds and two, because I was serious about this now. So I started saving aggressively during that time. 
And then I mentioned in my Paris shopping video, I think it was a part three of my Paris luxury shopping haul that I had used my travel fund to be able to fund my shopping in Paris as well as of course my actual time and stay in Paris. So you can watch that video to hear a little bit more about exactly what my expenses were like, but just as a gist of it, use points for hotel, zero dollars spent, round trip tickets paid for by work because I was in Europe for work, zero dollars spent, and my expenses in Paris were minimal other than of course the very, very big shopping galore that I did there. So by December, actually, I had two thirds of the cost of the Birkin 35. And at that time, I was trying to prepare myself for actually getting this bag in the first quarter of this year, which is what I discussed with my sales associate. But I also talked to my husband about if, if by some miracle, the bag came before I was financially ready for it or I had the total amount ready for it in my bank account, if he could front me the remaining and I would just pay him back within a very short amount of time. But based on my calculations, I would be ready with the entire amount by February of 2023, which is in a couple of weeks. So basically I was really almost prepared and that privilege of having a supportive husband, he was very much for it. So I'm very, very lucky in, in that regard. So surprise section, let's talk about what's next for me and what's next for me as a client of Hermes. So with the purchase of this beautiful Birkin 35 with toga leather in noir with palladium hardware, my bag collection is actually complete. And let me know in the chat if you guys want a video of my entire bag collection. You can see in this video my beautiful Celine Triomphe wallet on chain peeking, peeking out. So if I do buy a new bag, it will be to replace an old one. But I actually really love my entire collection right now and I'm not seeing myself as buying a new bag anytime soon at all, not even this year. So my collection is definitely complete. And if you want to see my collection, please comment down below. I do still have some items left on my closet audit wish list, although I am very, very deliberate about those items. I still see a couple of options that I could get from Hermes, but I'm also looking far and wide because clothes specifically are very, very unique to each individual. And there are just some brands that are not like a good fit for me or just don't really do well on my body type, the shape of my body. So this will take a lot longer for me. There are some pieces from Hermes that I might be getting, but that's not a uh, certainty. So we'll see. This year though, uh, my husband and I are doing a lot of like refurnishing. So we're gonna focus on housewares this year. And I think that's what I'm gonna be buying a lot from Hermes. But because the stock at my boutique is very, very limited when it comes to housewares, I probably will not be able to go as often as I, as I did last year. But I will still be shopping at Hermes. I will still be a client at Hermes, but just not as much as I did last year. Although I will try every month to be able to go and visit just to keep my profile updated. But that's like a conversation for another day. I am doing a lot of travel in this first quarter and I'm not even sure if I'll be able to visit the boutique anytime soon in the next four to six weeks. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and found new information from it. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well at Marie Under the Sun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.